Even though North Atlantic right whales are teetering on the brink of extinction, with only 450 of them reported in 2016, one researcher at Dalhousie University says the measures the government implemented earlier this year are working, and there is hope the animals can bounce back. Joining us from Halifax with more is Kim Davies. Kim, uh, at this time last year, Six North Atlantic right whales had been reported dead, many entanglements with uh, fishing nets. Tell me about the measures that the government has implemented and the results that you've seen so far. Well, the government implemented a number of, uh, of different measures to help reduce the risk of ship strike and fishing gear entanglement. That includes a 10-knot uh, speed zone for all large vessels, um, some fisheries closed areas, a quota reduction, and changes to, uh, to the amount of line that fishermen are allowed to uh, have in the water. Um, as well, there are, there's a number of different measures to collect better scientific information about the distribution of the animals, uh, the timing of overlap with fisheries, and, um, and, and to, to better track the distribution of fishing gear. Well, on Wednesday, the Department of Fisheries uh, unveiled some of these new protections for marine life. People in vessels will have to remain 100 meters away from most whales, 400 meters away from threatened or endangered whales in the St. Lawrence estuary. So what do you think of these measures? Would you like to see more done? What's been the reaction? <laughs> um, well, these measures um, were uh, have less of an impact on North Atlantic right whales than they do for other species that live very close to shore, like belugas and killer whales. Think, uh, activities like whale watching don't generally affect North Atlantic right whales really strongly because these animals make their habitats in the offshore area. In the Gulf of St. Lawrence, for example, it would take a ship maybe two or three hours just to get out to where the animals are um, are located. And so what we really focus on for right whales is trying to reduce um, the risk of entanglement and the risk of, of strike from, from large vessels like, like tankers and cargo ships. Now, I'm glad that you mentioned the Gulf of St. Lawrence because on Monday you're going out there to do further research on the right whales. Uh, yes. What are you hoping to find? <laughs> So this year, there's, a, there's an incredible uh, effort to survey these animals from, from airplanes, from vessels, and using autonomous vehicles. So far, there have been 111 animals sighted in the same general area where they've been sighted in the past couple of years. And, um, and none of these animals so far have, have been entangled or, or, or struck by ships in the Gulf. So that's very good news. And so what we want to know now is how is this population doing um, in terms of their, their population dynamics? We know there have been no calves so far this year. We think that food supply has been short and maybe these animals um, may be in a state of nutritional stress. So we're going out there to discover, you know, why are these animals all of a sudden in the Gulf of St. Lawrence where they are using it more often than they have in the past? What are they feeding on? Are they getting enough food and what is the sort of the state of their health? Let's broaden this out for a moment and talk just generally about Canada's vulnerable marine life because the uh, North Atlantic right whale isn't the only uh, endangered species out there. Uh, are we doing enough to protect these most vulnerable species? Uh, how would you grade our government's ability to protect them? <laughs> um, the, our our um, the activities for that the government has implemented for right whales and for other species uh, recently are unprecedented in Canada. Um, there before 2017, that for example, there had never been a fisheries closed area uh, for right whales, and I gather now on the west coast of Canada they've also. Uh, have some fisheries closed area to protect the Chinook resource for killer whales. And so that is a significant um, step forward for the conservation of marine mammals in Canada. Kim Davies, thank you so much for being here today. We appreciate your time. Thanks very much for having me.